I guess just Geo still, who is uh, not available. Yeah, I think so. Uh, Geo, of course, is not. And uh, us, we still have two training sessions before the game. But I believe um, no more problems in principle. I've been engaging with uh, questions about transfers, but I just wanted to talk to you about some reports today suggesting that the club have decided against renewing Gareth's loan. He's still got plenty of time, hasn't he, to get fully match fit and prove himself. He's obviously proved himself as a character with his, with his attitude at, at the club. What, what's your view on his future at the moment? There was not even a, a second of discussion about that. Gareth is a player on uh, on loan until the end of uh, of the season. Not one, not one second of of discussion. And we are speaking about, of course, Gareth himself, Real Madrid, Tottenham. But I promise you, not one, not one second of discussion. We've got plenty of time to, to get back to his very best in terms of fitness and, and match time, haven't he? Yeah, uh, of course, you know that he arrived uh, injured, injured. And he was injured for, uh, I believe, the first month. And then, step by step, and uh, Europa League matches were helping him to get his, uh, his condition. Premier League, of course. Europa League group phase is a different level than, than the Premier League. Uh, the knockout is a different story, but the group phase is a different intensity, a different rhythm, a different quality. So in the Premier League, um, didn't play many minutes. Then another small injury at Stoke, where uh, he was having a good, a good first half and, and now coming. Not an easy process. Uh, everybody knew that in the past couple of seasons in Madrid they were not um, easy for um, for him. So let's let's go step by step and try try to get the best out of him. Yeah, I just wanted to ask one Simon about the celebrations of a kind of final one. The, the new. The Premier League have underlined their, their COVID restrictions. But on Wednesday, your guys were very low key in celebrating the goal, as is required. Fulham, not so much so. They went for the full celebration. Is it no fair for to celebrate a goal? It is what we are asked for. <laughs> um, and we have to try. And probably the best way is for the for the goal scorer to, if he wants to celebrate in a crazy way, let him do it alone. Uh, you know. <laughs> Before we always tell players, celebrate as a team. Uh, don't forget the guy that assists. Don't forget the guys that are fighting hard behind you. Celebrate with everyone. <laughs> but now maybe it's time to say, celebrate alone. Uh, and let the other guys go to you in a calm way. I know that is that is difficult. I know that uh, our players did it uh, very very well. But it's difficult to be critic with others that don't that don't do it. But uh, you know, yesterday we had another meeting. This morning we had another one. Um, if every club does the same, I want to believe that. Maybe only in an extreme situation, players will lose control of their emotions. But probably, we can help each other to to educate the players of um, of not celebrating. So let's see, let's try all together. Can I can I just follow up from that? I mean, are you actually having to get your players in training to? Practice not celebrating after a goal. I mean, Harry Kane's always been very understated, but I just wonder whether you actually have to get your players around in training and say, right, let's score a goal and let's practice not going near each other. No, 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 not that. In tra in training, in the day by day, in the training rounds, what we are going to 
be or we always are is very very strict with uh, what the Premier League asks us to to do so in this moment uh, no kitchen separate dressing rooms mask everywhere even here I just took it to speak with uh, with you uh, in training uh, not to work very very closely but not training not to celebrate goals you know but yesterday we had a meeting with everyone today we had the meeting myself with the captain the Premier League again which I suppose every club does the same and we have to try you know we have to try um, in my case on the bench is is, is easier of course is easier um, also because I I'm very influenced by the VAR and when we score a goal I'm always waiting for VAR and to confirm that nothing happened before but for players on the pitch I think it's a very individual thing and again my advice is for the guy that score to maybe express the emotion of the team by himself you know by himself alone you can maybe express all the emotion of the team and then uh, of course share a walk with the with the mates and uh, and share the, the the happiness but let's try to make things the best we can football really has changed hasn't it um your wickham's game tomorrow is off at qpr are you in any way worried about your cup tie there in 10 days time i'm not because uh i believe then they will be nice and fresh and all ready <laughs> to play against us like is happening to many clubs um, that uh, they have their matches uh, postponed before they play us but that's the way the way it is so I expect to play them and um, I hope we do and finally from me um, you go to Sheffield United this weekend hang on to a lead in a game um, it's happened a few times recently. I was at Palace, finished one all. Um, you've had games this week against Fulham, finished one all. Wolves one all. What do you need to change when you hit the front to go on and win the game? We need to score the goals that we can, and uh, we need not to make mistakes that punish us. Um, if you compare. Uh, Hugo performance with Ariola performance, you have an answer. Uh, Ariola made, I believe, a couple of impossible saves that would kill the, the match, uh, also the post, and then uh, defensive mistake and, uh, and goal. That's, that's it. Is a sim looks complicated, but it's simple because it's about a basic analyze of uh, a basic analyze of the game. Uh, a part of that, we can discuss many many things. Of course, I don't want. Of course, I'm the first one that digs uh, very very deep to try to try to to understand what my team has to improve and could improve and has to improve. I'm the first one to do it. Um, but going to the basics, you score goals, you kill matches. You don't score goals, you stay in the you stay in the limit. If you don't make defensive mistakes, you end by winning. If you make a defensive mistake, you can be punished. Sheffield United compare this season to the side that beat Tottenham six months ago, back in July. The same. I don't look to the table. Of course, I look, but but I go deeper than that. And they are not um, the worst team in the Premier League at all. Um, they are uh, a much, much, much better team than what the table says. You look at their matches, you analyze their matches, and many times uh, the opponent was not better than them, and many times was one of these small big details that uh, decides the score decides the points and decides the table um, but
but they lose one nil, they lose two one, uh, they draw one one. Um, they are a very good team. Uh, so honestly, if uh, in our mind is we are going to play against uh, the worst team in in the Premier League, we are going to be in big trouble. How big is the task do you think they face in staying in the Premier League and surviving? What what kind of chances do you give them? Uh, you have to ask Chris. Uh, I focus on on two matches we have to play against them, and I promise you, I'm totally, totally convinced that uh, we have to play well if we want to win those matches against them. Just finally, um, going back to Gareth Bale, will he play a part in Sunday's game? And going forward, do you think you can just see yourself utilising him a little bit more? I don't know. Didn't make a decision yet. We have to train today, we have to train tomorrow. I didn't decide the team. Um, let's wait. Mom, and also, have you had any discussions recently about his future and everything? Then he was, then he leaving. I don't know, honestly, I don't know. Working with uh, the under-23s, playing sometimes uh, with them, and well, uh, the couple of times that I, I, I watch him, uh, good contribution for the for the kids team and for the kids uh, development but I don't know what is going to happen in the market. I uh, just want to ask you quickly, you, you mentioned uh, I think it was a couple of weeks ago, maybe even a week ago, about Steven Bergwijn having some muscular problems that were stopping him training with a full intensity. Um, I just wondered how he's doing with that, obviously he wasn't in the squad the other day. Yeah, he was ill. He was ill. The week before, it was ill the week of uh, Marin, and then he trained with the team only one day, which was the day before uh, we play Fulham. But, but in terms of the muscular injuries, is he is he getting over that yet, or is it still an issue? No, no, it was not a muscular injury. Uh, it was not that. It was it was ill. He was not even coming to to the training ground for a few days. If you saw those comments from Marcus Rashford that he at Manchester United, he said um, it was after talking to you that they became a bit more savvy about winning penalties. Was that something that you remember? Look, uh, um, first of all, the Liverpool Manchester United is uh, is a big match uh, that doesn't need me to make it. Uh, bigger or doesn't need me to do any any headlines uh, before such a big match that I know that means so much for uh, both clubs and and both uh, uh, supporters uh, population so I would leave comments maybe for later but not for now but if you feel the need to write something about it do it in a very simple way stats go to opt go to stats go to my history as a manager in my 10 premier league more or less 10 premier league seasons compare um, compare numbers and take your conclusions